Hey everybody, welcome back. So, today is a really cool video for me. I hope you guys think it's cool too. But it's cool for me because Endosnake reached out to me and asked me if I would review this product for them. And of course that product is the Endosnake uh, Borescope or Snake Cam, if you will. Uh, just to be clear up front with you guys, no money exchanged hands. They didn't pay me for this review. I did not ask for money. They are not. They didn't offer to pay me. They just offered to send the product to me uh, so that I could test it out and do a review of it. So I want to say a big thank you to Indosnake for that and also let you guys know that this isn't a bought and paid for review. I have some good things I'm going to say about the product. I'm also going to point out some things that I think they could improve uh, in future generations of the product and hopefully they'll, they'll take that feedback and you know use it to make the product better because that's the whole point of the review. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, they sent this out. It's a really cool little gunsmithing tool. You can do a lot of different things with it, not just gun stuff, but uh, that's primarily what I'm going to be using it for. And first of all, I want to talk about kind of how it's set up. So it comes in one of these hard cases like I just showed you. This is actually the uh, thing itself. I'll be rolling in some pictures too so you guys can see it. Um, but the parts actually all come in these really cool uh, like Mylar type resealable Ziploc bags. Uh, I'm assuming part of that is for like uh, static protection and, and stuff like that because these are electronics parts but I don't know that for a fact either way it's a nice little way to organize things now you can do a bunch of different uh, options or get a bunch of different options with the Indo snake not gonna go over all the different uh, variants that they have but they have some different diameter cameras and things like that on their website this one is the Wi-Fi box the model number for this one is the well it doesn't have a model number this is the 3.9 millimeter uh, 2M it says. Here, I'll show you guys that. So that means the camera diameter is 3.9 millimeters. So small enough to fit down pretty much anything with some caveats uh, that we're going to get into. The construction seems pretty good. As far as the wires go, everything is in there nicely. I mean, I can't just, you know, pull it out with like standard pressure, um, pull it out of the housing or anything, which is nice. You've got your control box here, which we'll go over once we actually plug the camera in and start using it. And then all the way at the other end, which I think that's very well thought out, they uh, put the control box towards the plug and not towards the camera, limiting how far down a small area you could get this. Then you've got your little metal camera over here. The camera on the end, I don't know what uh, actual pixels or anything it is. It's a really small camera. But it's got these little LED lights around. It looks like there's six of them that help you illuminate. Again, we'll see all this when we go into some of the footage that I've recorded. And then you've got your plug-in. This is probably the most ingenious piece of this entire design. So you have what looks like a standard USB plug on one end. And it is. You can plug this into a laptop, uh, uh, anything that has a USB port. I don't have Apple stuff, so I'm not going to say you could plug it into an iPad or anything. But anything with a USB port, you can plug that in. And then if you flip it down, like so, you now have a... USB type 2 I believe it is or type B I think it's type B uh, so the smaller skinnier ports like what Galaxy phones used to use before they went to the type C connector so like your S7s and before I believe could be wrong about that but then if you have one of those newer type devices it's got a USB type C plug that goes on top of that type B plug so you've got three different plug options built into the unit and if you have a device that doesn't have the proper driver installed to be able to read directly from an external device like this, like my Galaxy S9 for example, doesn't have that. They have a Wi-Fi box that you can get. They sent this out as well that allows me to use this through Wi-Fi on my phone so I don't even have to plug anything into my phone at all. That's kind of cool. Um, USB chargeable and if you plug this into your phone or the Wi-Fi box, this is going to draw power from whatever it's plugged into. So no batteries or anything like that with the Endo Snake. Let's go ahead, start talking about some of the setup and uh, features and use of the actual product. All right, so let's go ahead, set this thing up so that we can uh, use it. I'm gonna go into the settings on my phone. I have my phone on a little tripod over here just to make it easier for me to use. And go to the Wi-Fi settings. I'm gonna push and hold the power button for the Wi-Fi box until that little light comes on and stays on. And after about 10 seconds, maybe you guys will be able to see it, maybe not with the lighting it'll blink and that'll let me know it's actually transmitting so I can refresh the list of networks on my phone there it is I'm choosing F140 that's F140 for the network 
Uh, it comes with a pretty standard code. You just put that in once and you're good. Your phone should auto remember it the next time you plug it in or connect to it rather. And then that's connected. So I'll go ahead and now take my Indo Snake and I have to flip the USB piece down to get to the USB Type B. And there's two plugs on the front of this thing. There's one closer to the power button over here and then there's one on this side. The one on this side is to charge. The one next to the power button is the one you want to plug the Indo Snake into. Once I plug that in, go ahead and come over and go to an app called MoView. I'll have that on the screen as well. And turn that on. Voila. As you guys are seeing the feed now, I'm recording from the boar snake. And you'll see that my table is a little bit of a mess. But that's okay because it's a working table. Anyway, so here you see kind of what it looks like through the actual Indo snake. And you see I'm drinking an IPA. Things aren't quite to scale with this, but that's all right. You can see my camera over there. And the whole shebang, right? You guys don't really care about that. You care about the inside of the gun. So what I have here is my AR upper, and we're gonna take a look down the bore there. So we're gonna start from the chamber end, coming in. You guys can see the track, if I can hold it steady. You can see the track for the T-handle. You can see the end of the gas tube there. One of the first things you'll notice though, once you turn that app on is, you'll have this thing and you're thinking that you're looking, like if this is looking at my camera right now, you would think that you would see the microphone sitting on top of my camera at the top of your screen on your phone. Well, you probably won't be because it's a completely circular camera, which is good, but it doesn't actually tell you which way is up according to the lens in there. So you have to kind of twist it and figure out, oh, okay, that's the direction it's facing. This is the direction I want it to face based on what I'm looking for and then go from there. Not a big deal. It's very easy to you know maneuver this thing however you want, but it is something that just kind of takes you a second to get used to when you're looking at your phone and you know, you're looking this way thinking you're looking at this and the image is turned sideways. Your brain's trying to adjust to that. Anyway, not a big issue, but something that to note that you are going to have to work around. Um, the lights on the front, like I said, those LEDs, you can adjust them with the wheel on the side of the control knob. You can go from absolutely zero light all the way up to pretty freaking bright. I don't have a lumen meter, so I can't tell you how bright it is, but definitely bright enough to see inside your bore and tell if it's you know shiny or got pits or anything like that. You can illuminate your workspace very well. In fact, there were some times as I was putting it down uh, some different objects that it actually kind of blew itself out uh, with the light, so and it had to adjust itself. So, very very useful feature as far as the lights go. Let's talk about some of the things that I did for the review of the Indo Snake. Uh, one of the things I did is for durability testing is I took it and submerged it. You'll be seeing the video here in uh, just pure Hoppy's number nine. This stuff right here, the solvent, not the oil submerged it in that for about a minute. I just wanted to see if that solvent would get in there, mess with the camera lens or the coating over the camera lens or the LEDs or any of that stuff. After about a minute or so of that, no problems. I pulled it out, wiped it off. It was working just fine. I did that because this for me is going to be a gunsmithing type tool. This is going to help me get into nooks and crannies and look at different things. And I can also use it for video content as well, of course. But uh, I want to make sure that if this thing gets some oil, some solvent, some carbon, any of that kind of stuff on there, that it's not going to mess with it. It's not going to cause any issues. Uh, they did claim that this is uh, waterproof up to, uh, there, there's an IPX rating. I can't remember exactly where it is. I'll put, throw it on the screen. Um, but solvent didn't give it any problems. Now, I did ask them, and they did say not to get this little control box back here wet. That would be a problem. Uh, so... Be careful of that, obviously the USB end as well. It's the camera end and the cable that you should be fine with water and solvent and things like that. After that, I immediately just poured some bottled water in with that solvent to dilute it and to fill the glass up more. And it kind of created this weird looking milky uh, textured consistency stuff that looked really gross and smelled even worse. Uh, and then I dumped the camera in that for about five minutes. 
again, kind of testing out a little bit of that waterproofing, a little bit of that, uh, you know, resistance to the, the solvent and things like that. I want to make sure this thing's going to work out for me and it's not going to crap out just because it gets some, some dirt on it or some water or something. Uh, I did see in a video uh, on their website or on their Instagram or something, somebody running over it with a, a vehicle. I didn't try that out I don't want to abuse this thing that's not the goal I do actually want to keep this and be able to use it in you know gunsmithing projects and stuff like that around the house so I didn't do that I also tested this thing out in a lot of different guns I'll be rolling some of that footage in here as well for you to see and I found some interesting things um, for one I was able to get the camera itself down the barrel of everything I have which I have 22 long rifle all the way up, obviously, you know, anything, if it'll go in a 22, it'll go in anything bigger than that. I don't have a 17 HMR, so I couldn't try that out. But clearly, the camera works in any of the 22 caliber and above diameter firearms. That's with a caveat. That caveat is these little attachments that they include with it that I'm rolling in a picture of. You have a little 45 degree angle mirror so you can see. Uh, directly above the camera you have a little hook that you can use to grab things and pull out the example they gave me when uh, I asked them about this was if you drop a ring down say the, ki the kitchen sink you could use this to go in and grab that ring and pull it up and then they have this little coil pigtail looking guy on here that's actually got a magnet inside it so if there's something magnetic that you drop like a small pin inside your AR receiver or something like that you can just go down in there and pick it up with that and then you've got three of these little black collars here that the tools are attached to and these collars uh, I'm assuming again and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right about this these are basically spares in case you break the collars on the other tools now you can just put the tool in a different collar and, and you're good to go you're not just out that little extension on there which is really cool but the first big con with this system that I found is these little collars won't fit in smaller bore rifles or pistols for that matter. Um, I tried this in my AR. I could get it into the chamber. I could get it into the muzzle device. I couldn't get it inside the actual barrel of the rifle. Uh, I also tried an M1 Garand, which is a 30 caliber rifle. Didn't work there either. Got it into the chamber. Couldn't get it into the barrel and it's because of the black collar on the back. These collars are just so wide that they don't allow you to actually fit them inside the barrel, which that kind of sucks. And if you want to check out the lands and grooves on, let's say you're going to go buy a uh, older military rifle, like a collectible, you know, an old infield or something, and you wanted to check the, the barrel to look at all the lands and grooves, yeah, you could stick the bore sink down there and kind of look at it. But if you wanted to get in really close and really do a thorough inspection, you wouldn't be able to use this mirror to really do that. Uh, also, if you want to inspect the gas port on your AR or your AK or some other gas operated firearm, you wouldn't be able to do that with this little mirror. And that was kind of a bummer. I was really hoping to look at the, the gas port on my AR and see how much erosion it had. But other than that, you know, like in pistols and, and pistol caliber carbines, larger uh, things, I did get this to fit in a 9mm barrel. I should mention that. That's the smallest diameter barrel that I had to test it in that it would actually fit in. So 9mm pistol, 9mm rifle. Uh, I didn't have you know anything between 22 and 9mm as far as pistols go. So sorry about that. But it would work in something of that size or larger. The other really cool thing that I didn't mention before about the MoView app is it actually lets you record and take pictures from the boar snake. So that's actually really nice because I don't have to have some other app running on my phone to record this so I can put it in the video for you guys. It's just a one-stop shop. That's really cool. That's a feature I really like about that app specifically. Uh, all right, guys. So what do I think of the Indosnake overall? Well, I got to be honest with you. This is a really cool tool. I've seen a lot of uh, advertisements and stuff for it, and it's something that I've wanted to get my hands on for a while. Um, I'm very impressed with the durability of it. I'm impressed with the fact that they've thought through all the solutions to the potential problems you could have in terms of co uh, connectivity. You get the Wi-Fi box, which is a separate charge, unfortunately, um, but 
if you need this you get it and all you got to do if you're not sure just tell them what model of phone or tablet or whatever you're running and they'll be able to tell you whether or not you need a Wi-Fi box um, so that part is pretty impressive they thought of everything as far as the different kinds of connectors you might need and it's all in one spot very uh, you know you can't lose this one it's tethered on there it's a very simplistic and well thought out design I like that they give you plenty of cable here to get down I mean, you could probably get this thing down the bore of a Barrett 50 cal and get to the chamber I don't know that for a fact don't quote me but you probably could I mean it's a long cable and they have different lengths of cable available too so maybe you don't want something this big because you only shoot pistols they've got a cable for you maybe you shoot I don't know like old-timey duck rifles that are I don't know, 40 inch long barrels they've got a cable for you so you're good to go on that uh, they thought a lot of things I mean, they give you these uh, like I told you before these oh, I'm assuming electroshock uh, absorbent or resistant bags mylar bags to put them in and they're resealable with Ziplocs I actually really expected these things to uh, just be kind of a, a rip and throw it away thing but no I opened them up and they were actually zip to, uh, Ziploc. That's awesome. Nice little compact carrying case. I got one for the Wi-Fi box and one for the camera itself. Protect it as you're you know, flying with it or, or throwing it in a bag, going out, doing whatever, put it in your range bag or your toolbox or something. That's really cool. They thought of a lot of things. The biggest disappointment that I have with the product and the biggest, uh, I guess, suggestion that I have for Endosnake is to redesign the attachment method for these accessories so that one they'll fit down the bore of a 22 caliber firearm so 22 long rifle 223 556 5.7 by 28 any of those things um, I'd really like to be able to use all of these tools inside all of my guns and I can't do that with the way these are designed uh, the mirror itself I'm not hundred percent sure whether the mirror is too big to fit down the bore or not I imagine it would be a little bit too big but I know for a fact that these little black collars on the back are too big to fit in there and another thing about these black collars while I'm thinking about it is putting these things on can be kind of a bear um, they're not the most simple things to attach to the uh, the bore snake now they did cut out, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, they did cut out a little section there to show you exactly where the tool should sit on there. So it's a slightly different diameter, um, which is nice. It tells you the proper placement for the tool. But, I don't know, I'd like to see just a, a simpler, easier, smaller solution for attaching these things. And I don't know what that solution should be, but that's my feedback on things that could be improved on the Indo Snake. Other than that, it's a really cool product. I'm, I'm very happy to have one in my hands now so I can use it for whatever projects I feel like I want to use it for or I might need it for. I'm definitely going to be using it more and more. I'm going to be using it to get some video footage of certain things when it's appropriate uh, for you guys and et cetera and so forth. Not something I'm mad about at all. And it gives you probably 90 to 95 percent of the versatility you would need from a product like this uh, depending on what your application is in in a really small fairly inexpensive package honestly I mean it's not like some 80 90 three four hundred dollar type system um, I'll put the pricing up here from their website so you guys can see what that looks like but yeah that's really about it I'm happy with it I want to thank Endosnake again for sending the product out uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the review and if you have any questions if I, there's something that I didn't cover or that you didn't understand about the review or the product please feel free to send me a message uh, either comment down below send me an email send me a DM on Instagram whatever works for you guys uh, that's all I got for you guys today thank you for watching I really really appreciate it y'all take it easy roll tide and I'll see you later